four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Ten. I've um, been here at Cranberry since the beginning. I love it. To me, I, everyone has to find their niche. Kindergarten for me is my niche. I'm a, a foundation person. I don't mind saying things over and over and doing them over and over just so that they get the foundation. The expectation is, at least in my room, for them to be reading. But for math, they need to be fluent with numbers one through five. They have to be able to manipulate numbers to 20, and they need to know how to count to 100. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 eleven, twelve, forty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 40, it's just that repetitive nature that they need to gain. They go from concrete to an impulation of both concrete and abstract, and that's just one of the processes, and kids love song. So it just makes them learn it so much easier, and it's just fun for them. We kind of like sing uh, Days of the Week and uh, the chicken song. Chicken six, chicken five, and chicken six. Let's go to the chicken mix. Let's go to the chicken mix. It's kind of a favorite song, and it goes, and the chickens, it's very like kind of cool. The numbers go all the way up to 10. Because it has melodies and music and lots of our things to it, like music notes and lots of our things. And then it's just really funny because we get to um, like dance around to it and, and it teaches us this silly stuff. It's like kind of like hilarious when they do it and then there's one part at, um, I just, I just like the part I'm having it. Chickens back to the chicken pen. They need to move. They're young. The activities cannot be a half hour long. So they need to have 10, 15 minutes and move. And I think that takes a lot of preparation. I think it takes a lot of flexibility because sometimes it's just not working. So let's scrub this. Know quickly enough not to frustrate yourself trying to get it done or the kids and move on. If you are at listening two, go to listening one. Listening one goes to listening two. If you are with me, go to computers. Computers come to me. Well, we went to a computer for math. It was easy because we've been learning math sentences and numbers and lots of other things in class. It's like you learn numbers and like math questions and lots of other things. Well, we've been doing subtraction up to this week, and this week we, our focus became numbers from 11 through 20. And my kids have a pretty good concept of numbers because we do numbers all the time. But that was a review, and just of the subtraction skills, and to do it mentally, you know, with some very small cues in a fun way for them. And then we went to Miss B to do like some add, uh, taking away, like, and adding more things into it. Today we're gonna to look at combining numbers, one second, combining numbers from 10 to 15, okay? Hoy vamos a poner números juntos de 10 a 15, okay? That it's easy to take away because it's just pushing something away like, like giving it away or, and plus is just like putting something in, like getting, buying a new toy. So which ones do you have to get rid of? If this is five, do you have extra there? OK, 
count with me. One, two, three, four, five. What are those two doing? Yeah, put two in them. Nope, that was the last problem. Take them away and let's fill up a line. We kind of have to add them up and this be told put the big number in your head and then put the littlest number. Fluency and just that whole number concept and, and owning the numbers. They have to know what a number represents and how to combine and take away from numbers. Taking away is pretty easy and plus we just have to do this if it's hard for us. But if it's easy, we just do it. Well, I was a station and I was the lesson. And this way I can get with them a small group. I could differentiate that way. I could see some groups needed like a number line or more hands on where others just whip through it. So you need to have extensions and you need to have a little bit of repetitiveness and be able to identify when kids might be struggling. If I were to make a math sentence out of this, what could my math sentence be? It would be 10 and how many? How many? I had today a race for the stars, and they're taking number cubes, and they add them together. And my idea with that is just to gain fluidity. I have kids already that they can look at six, five, on a number cube and know it's five. They don't have to count it. But it's good because it differentiates because some of them need to count still, and they still have that option without feeling that they're being helped in any way. And now we're doing capture the stars. And you just have to, you just have to take some dice, roll it, and then add them up. And then there's these numbers that go up, and you, you just have to use a crayon or a marker because Miss Bela sometimes let us use markers. So we just use either one of those. In the other one, that was a newer activity where they're writing the numbers and they were supposed to be rolling number cubes to add up individually. So it became an individual thing and then that one was topped off with the number cubes on the snowman actually writing math sentences to join the numbers. So that worked on skills that we've been doing, which is adding, subtracting in a way, and also just gaining fluency and that number sense that they need to know for the future. Is that 13? I don't think so. Count 10, 10, 10, 11, 13. So what do you? All right, that's 10, and we're supposed to get to 13. Evan, 12, 13. Stop! There is such a developmental gap within kindergarten. I have many students. I would think I think there's eight or nine that will not turn six till July and August. So they're young. So that emotionally, and that is a big thing with a lot of kids, not only developmentally, academically, but what makes them who they are is still being developed. She does good and really is good with her students and progress and stuff for like easy challenges to the hard challenges. The part where you get to do math games and you get to run and you get to run new stuff, and that's Ian's kind of nice Miss B helps us. One plus two equals how many? Three. So we're using the, the snowman as a one plus two. Okay, so let's go one plus two and put your plus out here and make that the, the equal sign. All right? All right. The station, we have computer and we have listening one, listening two. Sometimes we might have Mrs. B. We might go to our seats sometimes to finish things. Twelve gracious angel fish thinking they're in heaven. Along came the divers. Now there are... You think seven? I know that it's going backwards numbers. Well, it was... It was about fish. They were different kind of them. It was like counting down, like from the big number to the lowest number with fishes. And every time it started from 10 all the way down to zero. And then every fish went away. And then at the end of zero, all the fish weren't there because they, they passed away by the ocean things who were trying to get them. 
I try to use a lot of different tools to doing the same concept. We have a whole set of math tools that they can use at any time because one child can see it on a ruler, the number 10. Some might need a, a 10 frame, and another one might need just to have the manipulative to count the numbers. So just using all those things helps solidify in each mind as they need it and their ability to see it in another way. One lonely lionfish left to be the hero. No fish to s left to save. Now there are... Anuta? Zero. Yes. There's no more. That was a little bit sad. That's why we have to take care of the fish. I also like to hit upon what's around us in nature. We're going to be going on a trip in a month and a half to the Mont Marine. So I want to start showing them all the nature things that we're going to see on Mont Marine in the planetarium. Sometimes she's nice about letting us sometimes use her things. She takes us off the ones she takes us off. She takes us to the big kid playground when we're only in kindergarten, and I kind of like it so much. We kind of get to um. Every day before we get to go, even um, before we in um, off the math, we get to play math games. So we have to do things like maybe like because she is a very good teacher and she used to teach uh, first grade and she and she learned lots of things from her students. And now she's a kindergarten teacher, which is good for Cranberry Elementary School. I know what I do with my kids. I can see it. I hear from my parents. I, I hear my parents say, oh yeah, I heard them talk, somebody talking about you. So you constantly hear that. But to, to be acknowledged by your, your peers, who in this case, I consider this the finest school. We have teachers that are so driven to excellence and, and whatever it takes, you know, ideas, that to be highlighted for this school and this population, I don't, I can't, I can't put it in words. It's just, the most amazing thing that could ever happen to me. Well, she's uh, nice and very good at, at math and, and teaching and numbers and, and letters and lots of cool things that she does for, uh, for, the, for the children. She, she is like the best teacher ever and um, she's really nice sometimes. She makes us do hard things, but sometimes we might get past them. And we do lots of things with her, really fun things. That's all. How much is 10 and 5? 15. Good job. That was just a small snapshot of the different things that go on. You know, we have Kagan going on, we have peer tutoring, we have severely ESOL kids, we have speech kids. You know, so it's just one little thing and we all coexist together in a daytime family because this is my daytime family and that's how we address it. Mm -hmm.